hi my name is martha welcome back to my booktube channel welcome to wellness lit wednesdays or thursday depending on when this video will go up because it's been a challenge kind of getting my videos up <laughs> but i mean we are here aren't we <laughs> so let's just roll with it okay so the book uh, that i'm going to talk about today is um ain't i a woman by bell hooks um this is a book on black feminism without calling it black feminism so uh, this is a sort of um academic work on black feminism and black feminist theory which isn't cited which i and countless other people have taken issue with which i will explain later but also which i understand for reasons i will also give later but she kind of wrote this book as a way for black women to understand feminism without the trappings of citation because she kind of felt that um if it was too academic then it would be too inaccessible for black women which i disagree with and i feel like she should um give more credit to <laughs> black women i don't know if the, her views have changed but i guess i mean it was useful for what it was and i feel like if it was cited it would have been a stronger work in my opinion but i completely love this book five out of five stars I, the the complaints i had were really minimal and also the fact that it's uh kind of talking about you know feminism in the 70s and 80s and 90s so there are some things that might not apply today but a large part like a majority part of actually the whole book except for one or two instances applies up to today and can be used in any sort of way to understand how to move forward and how to be able to challenge power structures constructively with the correct tools like if you know your history then you're able to correct mistakes in the future so ain't i a woman is a speech that was given by sojourner truth in a women's convention in ohio in 1851 she was asking the crowd ain't i a woman i mean i am black i am a woman you're talking about these women's rights things you're talking about these civil rights thing not civil rights no I, it was abolition at the time i think i please americans don't drag me <laughs> but yeah I think yeah i think it was about abolition and she was kind of asking ain't i a woman i am black you know i am you know you, you if you're gonna give people rights if you're gonna give women rights i'm am i not a woman i listened to this on audiobook and i absolutely loved the narrator the narrator was so like she gave the like a very good narration of the story of the book that is and she was um so classy her reading of ain't i a woman was the highlight of the book the way she would go into different characters of the books and affect their voices and go into their impressions and what they would sound like and different kind of people from different walks of life you could also almost think that there was more than one person who was narrating the book but it was just her and it was uh, excellent like yeah, i don't listen to audio fiction books i tend to only i can only stand to listen to a non-fiction book because um nine out of ten or these days anyway the books are read by the author so i kind of feel like i'm listening to a podcast in a sense so i'm able to stand reading that book as opposed to reading a fiction book where i feel like the voice of the narrator kind of takes over the voice in my head and it kind of messes up with the way i perceive the the book and the settings and the characters and the plot so i tend to only read non-fiction books because it's more useful for me to you know to get what's going on and i don't get bored if i'm listening as opposed to if i'm reading i get bored reading non-fiction books because i feel like i'm studying but if i'm listening to it i feel like i'm you know listening to a podcast which i have more concentration span for um interestingly enough bell hooks kind of outlines why black women need feminism how black women specifically have been targeted by the white supremacist capitalist society as she calls it which is quite a mouthful 
but she goes into how the the black women have been devaluated from slavery colonialism up to the point where she was writing in which i believe was the 90s and she outlines historically how black women have been oppressed by the white patriarchal structure she talks about the power dynamics in 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 the context of 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 slavery she talks about the roles that black women were expected to play in slavery and colonialism the kind of um the way the black women were reduced to both beasts and sexual beings so they were kind of seen as um immoral and this applies to any other context because i read a book recently about um the Luo women in i mean in Luo women in nyanza in in another context and it was the same thing how women were how black women african women were sort of viewed as immoral and too free with the men and all those things that kind of went into the devaluation of black women and on the other hand white women were kind of seen as ideal and put on pedestals this this um this image of the 19th century victorian woman as a uh, pious as you know takes care of her children is very ladylike you know does ladylike things unlike the black woman who's a sexual savage beast and is only good for you know one thing which allowed or which created this environment where white men had you know um gave themselves license to you know rape black women and stuff like that and also how white women would also participate in this um in this oppression of black women in their homes because black women are the people who uh worked in in the the homes of 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 slave of slave masters and colonizers and this was particularly dangerous for them more so than picking cotton because they were directly involved with their slave masters children and they tended to be very um mistreated over there and they were they were you know you could do anything to them and they wouldn't say anything and also how they saw how white women are treated and they also wanted a piece of that because you know the for well, the way slave masters would use these um kindness tactics to like get the black women to you know comply with them either that or force and how white women kind of participated in that because they saw that if it was them hey if it was them you know so they kind of enabled their husbands to do whatever they wanted to these black women so that they would not receive the brunt of the the abuse and the and, and you know the abuse that those black women um got and they would kind of brush it off like oh you know my husband is just turned away from god and they would call these black women beasts these women have turned them away even abolitionists would also say that these women have turned uh, white men away from god and stuff like that so that was the beginning of the devaluation of black women and you know if it was white men creating this structure so and white women were placed on this pedestal so the next obviously goes into after slavery and into you know the civil the 50s and the civil rights era and how that devaluation continued into you know articles into plays written by black playwrights white playwrights um into um images that you would see on 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 national on on newspapers really there were these images of black women as you know sexual immoral beings and in playwrights in um on tv how you know women i mean black women were presented as the jezebel the mommies that you know aunt jemima the 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 sapphire also you know there was this, there's this period where black women go and look for domestic work in white homes because they need to feed their families and kind of black men kind of you know eschewing the idea of working for the white man because they felt emasculated they didn't want to work in uh, for the white man as 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 
as it were and how you know black women were again mistreated in these kind of homes they were given low pay they were abused by the white women and i don't know uh, bell hooks kind of refers to their bosses as white men but i in my opinion their bosses were white women because they had direct dealings with them and since they were taking care of their kids they would you know have direct dealings with their white women so i felt like white women were also involved in that kind of power structure even the, i mean just like a bottom power which i guess might not be real power but in that dynamic it absolutely is so so she, so she talks about how you know um how uh, by this time women want you know equal pay for equal work and how white women would you know champion this but they would push black women out of you know those movements and how black women had to make their own movements so that um they can be heard and i took i took issue with her saying that black women and white women were kind of fighting over which women's movement was better for the male gaze to you know focus on because i didn't find that was useful because i in my opinion i felt like black women were forming these organizations as a way for their voices to be heard because how are you going to do anything if you are in an organization where people are racist they're not doing any any work to dismantle to challenge the white supremacy that is pervasive in that movement how are you going to challenge it when you are bought into this idea that it's only white women i mean this fallacy that white women had that you know white women only compared to black people and black people referring to black men and they would push black women out of the movement and i felt that these movements that black women created as a way for them to really have any way to say something you know if you're going to go to a convention and white women are shouting for you to be removed from there how are you going to make any serious change well we might not be in that time but for right now i feel like the only way that can happen is if um white feminists are able to you know do the work do the work to challenge white supremacy to challenge patriarchy in order for any sort of working together to be possible because that word sisterhood i feel is very problematic and toxic because in families a lot of hiding of toxic shit is done and there's not much accountability so if there's any need for accountability i felt that there should be she should also have said that on their part they also need to do a lot of work and maybe for the black women they need to do a lot of healing because when i read this book there was so much so much coming at black women from all sides getting it from every side i mean talking about every side because she also talked about black sexual politics and the relationship between black men and black women and she also explained a lot about you know how uh, you know relation like love you know she talked about interracial relationships and she kind of gave a context into how why why black men seek you know white women companionship i mean not companionship but seek white women unions and why black women are not likely or less likely to you know pursue white i mean unions with white men because you know historically white men raped black women so you know those that and also in the black community there was this you know um thing that you know don't go for the white man because they will rape you so you know black women are kind of apprehensive about that and also you know the image the images in media were showing that black women were just you know um immoral sexual you know they were i mean black men women like avoided white men because they thought you know white men only avoided them for i mean white men only approached them when they wanted sex and you know as well as they feared you know that thing of you know i might be raped by this white man and on the other hand with black men who bought into the idea of that 19th century woman so in doing so they idealized that white woman but dehumanized her because they saw her as this pious you know 
bust, you know, beauty or whatever the case was and bought into this thing that black women were immoral and devaluated them and also, you know, uh, you know, devalue, dehumanize them by devaluated, devaluating them. And all those things were very interesting. She also talked about how preferences are not a useful thing if you are then if you are going out there to you know talk if you are um talking badly about women in your race is this is like uh, applies to both black men and black women and i was like i don't know um but you know what was useful for me was knowing the historical context and knowing where people have come from knowing why history made so that these things like you know in on when we have these conversations in 2020 and they don't make sense why people think like this and when i read something like this and she's explaining the historical context then it makes it so it makes it kind of clear why people have these problematic ways i mean problematic um ideals when when it comes ideas when it comes to interpersonal relationships and you know romantic relationships and friendships and all those kinds of things my only issue with the book apart from its uh, other like wonderful things was um first of all I, I already talked about you know the women white feminism and accountability and what that is supposed to look like how we're supposed to work together to make that um challenging patriarchy a reality but the other thing is the citations thing because if you don't make citations because she makes a lot of assertions which presents them as a fact or makes an uh, an assumption or think says this and this can lead to this because you know so i felt like between point a and b i would have liked her to say i mean i would have liked her to you know cite something because i felt like a lot of these things were her opinion which is fine but if you're presenting this as a sort of tool as an academic work as a tool that black women can use for themselves to kind of challenge patriarchy to to find a way to empower themselves then i think that things should kind of get some stuff like you should kind of help like lead us to where we can see what other people have said on the other topic and kind of compare them to you and see who is you know get get to her own conclusion so she kind of speaks like she's the authority on black feminism and i kind of felt like that was that was kind of some undertones in there on the other hand i felt like fine you don't have to put citations because recently i was reading sister outsider and she was like if you are asking me to cite not cite but you know um give put these things as an academic work or a historical work she first of all she was not a historian she was talking about her experiences how she ex experienced life and how do you expect to hear these experiences how do you expect to fight a, a structure if you don't listen to the person who is oppressed by the structure I can't say that the book was irresponsible in the way it was written. I feel like I agree with a, a lot of things that were said. So I felt like it was a good um, kind of black feminist theoretical piece, in my opinion. And yeah, I, I just, I wish that there was a version of this that was African feminism because a lot of this would apply in American context or in a Western context and i couldn't see how that would necessarily apply to an african feminist if only maybe to challenge neocolonialism like from a distance but not directly so this would be more useful for people in a western context but for africans i like i just would have loved to see I, I mean, I would like I would like to read a similar thing to this, which has this, all this historical, you know, breakdown of how black women, African women, how African women specifically have been disenfranchised by because of patriarchy. And patriarchy is uh, comes in a lot of forms because of a lot of cultures. So that's why I would like, you know, a different perspective and what African women think um, 
feminism look like what they think um sexual freedom looks like how freedom from sexual exploitation gender exploitation looks like and how if intersectionality applies for african women i mean it can apply for um in the western context but for the freedom of african women unless you're in a multi uh, multi racial society and not oppressed directly by white supremacy then that that it's kind of different i guess is what i'm trying to get at overall i enjoyed this book i loved the kind of questions it sparked in my mind i i loved the the you know the breakdown so i could see clearly why black women need feminism why it is for us why um patriarchy has really um affected us greatly greater than even white women greater than black men greater than you know anybody really uh, uh, like affected by um by by power structure and you can imagine i mean this is black women so what about black trans women what about you know black women who are in the lgbt community so that was quite interesting to read and yeah so if you want i've created a good reads list of an introduction to black feminism and i can put it down below and yeah you can go and check it out if you're interested so thank you for watching this review and i will see you in my next video please like share and subscribe bye